all right so let's start this chapter the sub topic so when we are talking about endocrinology uh, there is an important gland which we have to talk and that is adrenal gland now you see here this is the adrenal gland it weighs about 4 grams okay and it is uh, on top of the kidney uh, if you look at the word what is the word that we use uh, medically to represent something that is above the word is supra okay so sometimes this is also called as supra renal gland okay all right so today we will talk about drugs that act on the adrenal cortex so when we talk about the adrenal cortex okay so we'll be dealing with corticosteroids and when we talk about corticosteroids we have when we talk about promoting the adrenal gland to pro to produce more and more of the hormone so here we have two categories that is glucocorticoids and the other one is mineralocorticoids uh, when we talk about antagonism so we do have two types of recept two types of uh, mechanism of antagonism the first one is you go and you block the receptor okay so that is receptor antagonism so when we talk about receptor antagonism we further have two two subtypes either we'll block the glucocorticoid receptor or we'll block the mineralocorticoid receptor right okay the third way to antagonize is by inhibiting the synthesis okay <clears throat> so first of all we'll discuss how antagonistic effect will be produced and then we'll discuss how antagonistic effect will be produced this is uh, the diagram of the adrenal gland okay how it looks like and these are the zones i'm sure in physiology you have studied this already right so the outer we have adrenal when we uh, when we uh, look at uh, the adrenal gland okay so we do have medulla and then we have uh wait a minute yeah okay so we do have medulla here right which produces catecholamines what are catecholamines the that those have catechol rings all right and the other part of medulla is the cortex and cortex has three layers now our main layers which we are concerned with today is zona glomerulosa which produces mineralocorticoids and the other one is zona fasciculata so that produces glucocorticoids right okay so when we talk about the glucocorticoids and when i'm telling you that your adrenal gland is already producing these right so that means it does have some major function some major role in our body now what that function could be you see it actually suppresses inflammation okay uh, it suppresses immune system all right so its action is this all right let's study further about it so when we talk about the natural adrenal corticoids so we have glucocorticoids okay so they are synthesized under the control of ACTH if I go back here it means that ACTH will uh, uh, will be sent to the adrenal gland and as a result the uh, corticosteroids will be produced when I say corticosteroids 
I'm sure the word itself is telling you the composition of the molecule, right? Cortico produced by cortex, steroid. It means a steroidal in nature, right? Okay. So cortisol, uh, that is also called as hydrocortisone, is a predominant natural glucocorticoid in humans. The three keto and 11 hydroxy groups are important for its biological activity. All right. We are talking about the natural one here. Okay. The major mineralocorticoid of adrenal cortex is aldosterone. Right. So 11 deoxy corticosterone and aldosterone precursor has both mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoid activity. Okay. So the adrenals also synthesize various androgens, predominantly dehydroepiendosterone and endosteinedione. So if you look here, cortisol is here, which is the main molecule. All right. And then if you look here, right, so we talked earlier about the androgen, right, that the estradiol would be produced. But if you look here, okay, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. So I was telling you all that if you look here, we already talked about the endosterone. Right. Okay. Now, when we look at the other part, okay, we have aldosterone and cortisol produced. And these are the adrenal steroids. Now, we'll talk about synthetic adrenocortical steroids. So, which are the ones that we are producing artificially? Because sometimes we want a mechanism by which we can actually suppress the immunity we can suppress the inflammation all right okay so let's read about it as i said earlier that the synthetic one are, are, are also there so cortisol acetate and prednisone are 11 keto steroids that are converted to 11 hydroxy groups by liver to give cortisol and prednisolone respectively. It, I'm sure we all have heard names of these drugs, especially prednisolone, right? So if you try to recall, when was the last time you heard it and where you heard it? What was the setup in which you heard it? By the way, a research question for you all. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, a research question for you all. Can we give a COVID patient corticosteroid? Hmm? Think about it. All right. So, we basically give prednisolone to the patients, okay, who are hospitalized, who just had their surgery. So, we give the patients this medication, okay? So, a carbon 1 and 2 double bond, as in prednisolone and prednisone, increases glucocorticoid activity without increasing the mineral corticoid activity. So, addition of 9 alpha fluoro group that happens in dexamethasone and fludrocortisone increases the activity. Methylation or hydroxylation at the 16 alpha position abolishes mineralocorticoid activity with little effect on the glucocorticoid potency. Now, what is the mechanism of action? Uh, before going through this slide, I must go through this slide. You see what is happening here? A corticosteroid was here. There are multiple ways by which it is producing action, right? So, 
the corticosteroid first of all binded to the G protein okay and it produced a cascade of uh, a cascade or a cascade event right in which numerous uh, secondary secondary messengers were produced the other step is that the corticosteroid right it can bind to the glucocorticoid receptor which is present within the cell membrane all right and then it activates the g protein and then again the secondary messenger is activated since they are steroidal in nature so i'm sure you all remember that they can easily pass through the cell membrane okay and what they can do is this that within the cytoplasm there are two receptors glucocorticoid receptor and mineralocorticoid receptor so the corticoid corticosteroid would actually bind to the these all right and then uh, the complex would actually enter into the nucleus through the nuclear pore and then a uh, specific dna all right a specific gene on the dna would be uh, triggered to produce a specific type of protein right everybody now coming back here the effects of mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoids are mediated by two separated specific intracellular receptors intracellular within the cell right okay the mr and gr that is mineralocorticoid receptor and glucocorticoid receptor natural and synthetic steroids uh, enter cells rapidly and interact with these intracellular receptor the resulting complexes modulate the transcription rate of a specific genes and lead to an increase or decrease in the level of specific proteins right everybody okay all right then we have pharmacological properties of corticosteroids so the first one is plasma binding so 80% of circulating cortisol is bound to corticosteroid binding globulin and 10% is bound to plasma albumin so some of the potent synthetic glucocorticoids such as dexamethasone do not bind to cbg leaving all of the absorbed drug in a free state both natural and synthetic steroids are excreted by the kidney following reduction in formulation of gluc glucuronides and sulfates then we have all of the steroids may be administered orally this is very important point okay uh, a variety of glucocorticoids including cortisol prednisone and dexamethasone can be injected intramuscularly muscularly or by the subcutaneous route so various glucocorticoid preparations are available for otic rectal or topical administration glucocorticoids administered as inhalants are used to treat asthma why i'll ask you okay if you know that you can tell me in the comment section okay agents with the longest half life tend to be the most potent obviously right so short acting agents are cortisol uh, such as cortisol are active for 8 to 12 hours intermediate ones such as prednisolone are active for 12 to 36 hours and long acting one such as dexamethasone are active for 39 to 40 uh, 54 hours wait a minute uh, amna i did not get your question you asked that glucocorticoid is steroidal in nature or fatty it is cholesterol so it is lipophilic in nature okay uh, so why it needs cbg 
to enter in cell. No, no, no. It does not need CBG to enter in the cell. Okay. Look. Wait a minute. What do we do? Asa, no. Okay. What do we do is this. Whenever we take a medicine. All right. Uh, it does not happen that all of a sudden it goes into our body. Okay. And it, it starts to produce its action. And uh, because you see, if, if the, by this mechanism that is going in your mind that I'm predicting right now, is this that a medicine you're taking, right? And then it's getting into the intestine and then it's dispersing into the blood and then it's producing effect and then it's getting eliminated, right? So, wait, I've got another message. Yes, beta. Okay, it is your right. All right. Okay, so I'm not getting back to you. Okay, so what what does they do is this? In fact, every medicine. Okay, what do they do is this? They bind. Okay, uh, and because of their binding, for example, I took a medicine. Right, it went to my intestine. Uh, it's released. The active ingredient is released into my blood. Right now, it will actually bind to the albumins, right, in my blood, and uh, then it will get released slowly and gradually, okay, so that's how we actually uh, realize that how much it's, um, you know, uh, duration of action is going to be, and for how long it will stay in our body, I tell you, when I was a child, I uh, saw that this medical series, I think that by the name of house, uh, all right. So uh, what happened, the lady, she took some medicines, some cough syrup, okay. And then she was on the bus. Uh, she met an accident. And later on, when she was brought into the hospital, she was given uh, other medicines. And because of the reason, the cough syrup was already there in the blood. All right, it interacted and it caused liver damage, right? And then the lady passed away because of that. So, you see, the, the whatever medicine you take, it is not that, that you take and the, it will get eliminated in a microsecond, okay? It's not going to be like that. That is why its half-life is like 39 to 45 hours. So, this much long, when the... Half-life is this much long. It means that it does have capa capacity to uh, retain itself in the body, okay? All right. Then we have drug administration attempts to pattern the circadian rhythm. All right, I tell you what. Whenever we take glucocorticoids, so we tend to uh, stay up for a longer period of time. That brings to me another question. During the exam, should we start to take glucocorticoids? Hmm? Should we start to take glucocorticoids? What do you think? I want answer in the chat box. Exams are coming in March. We all need to study hard. So tell me, should we start taking glucocorticoids? Okay. I am leaving this question, all right? And I want you all to answer by the end of the chapter when you would be gone through the other slides as well and when you would know about the negative aspects of the uh, this category, okay? Just keep this question in mind that, for example, if I have an exam tomorrow, so should I take glucocorticoids? All right. So coming up back here, Bita. So drug administration attempts to pattern the circadian, circadian rhythm. That is why... You see a double dose is given and the first dose is given in the morning and then the second dose is given in the afternoon. So you see a person who took in the morning would stay awake till afternoon. Then the person took another dose in afternoon, stay up till late evening and then the person would sleep, right? Okay, so alternate day therapy relieves clinical manif manifestations of the disease state while causing less severe suppression of the adrenal hypothalamus.
hypothalamic pituitary axis. In this therapy, large doses of short acting or intermediate acting glucocorticoids are administered every other day. So patients removed from long-term glucocorticoid therapy must be weaned off the drug over several days. So you see uh, a recovery period is given and we cannot stop all of a sudden. Why? Because if we'll stop all of a sudden, so the body cannot compensate because you see when I will artificially introduce the synthetic corticosteroids into my body. So my body will send message to the brain that, okay, fine, do not produce any more ACTH because we don't need any more of that, right? And because of which, uh, you know, if all of a sudden I would stop taking uh, the synthetic glucocorticoids, okay? So obviously it will trouble my body, right? All right. So, uh, okay. So the physiological effects of glucocorticoids are mediated by increased breakdown leading to negative uh, nitrogen balance, right? The word itself, you see glucocorticoid, right? Uh oh, guys, the meeting is about to get over in 10 minutes. If let's say, if let's say the, uh, I don't say thank you to you, okay? That means you have to join back, okay? All right. So, coming up back to our topic, Asma, no peace. Acha. So, I was saying glucocorticoids, okay? So, gluco is referring to the glucose, right? So, it actually increases the blood glucose level by stimulation of glucogenesis, right? Okay. So, these agents increase the synthesis of several key enzymes involved in amino acid and glucose metabolism, okay? So, glucocorticoids increase plasma fatty acids and ketone body formation via increased lipolysis and decrease glucose uptake into fat cells and redistribution of body fat. Right, everybody? So, these agents increase caliuresis. Cali, whenever you hear the word cali, it means it's, we are talking about potassium, okay? And uresis is referring to the urine, okay? So, it means a lot of potassium is being released into the urine, okay? So, via renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate, increased pota potassium uh, protein metabolism results in release of intracellular potassium. Glucocorticoids decrease intestinal absorption of calcium and inhibit osteoblasts. So, osteoblasts are the cells that produce bone, right? Okay. So, glucocorticoids promote sodium and water retention, which means edema, 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 right? Okay. Then we have glucocorticoids, anti-inflammatory effects. Okay. So, when we talk about anti-inflammatory effects, I'm sure uh, you all must have heard about the skin conditions, right? Where the skin gets inflammated. For example, eczema, which is very famous, right? It's a very severe skin condition. I know it's not that severe, but the people who have it, I, their lives get really messed up because of this reason. So they use this glucocorticoids in order to uh, reduce the inflammation, right? So specific effects include inhibition of antigenic response of macrophages and leukocytes. Okay, so they are inhibiting macrophages and leukocytes. They are inhibiting work of my WBCs. When they will inhibit glucocorticoids will inhibit work of my WBCs, isn't it bad for my body? Tell me in the comment section, guys. Isn't it bad for my body? Just imagine, I am taking immunosuppressant. Why? Why on earth will I take an immunosuppressant? Why on earth 
will I take such a medicine that will inhibit the soldiers in my body to protect myself? Why would I do that? Give it a I am waiting for the answers. Kindly repeat. Okay. I am saying the first point says that inhibit antigenic response of macrophages and leukocytes. Antigenic response is this that the antigen attacks in, in the body. Okay. It enters into the body. And then macrophages and leukocytes actually attack on these antigens and produce you know uh, harm to these antigens right now my question was why would i take any medicine that will uh, inhibit the macrophages and leukocytes to protect my body from the antigens why would i want the antigens to retain in my body Okay, for example, I just received a kidney from somebody, okay? Now, the kidney is not, uh, you know, my WBCs are not familiar to that kidney, even though, you know, all of the genetic testing, cell testing, and blah, blah, everything is done. Even then, my body will take time to accept that new kidney, right? the foreign kidney so in order to make it accept i will take this drug okay so because of the inhibition of the and somebody said autoimmune dis, autoimmune disorders cause inflammation good people said that is what anti-inflammatory agents do they stop our body to react so much and stop excessive inflammation. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, very nice. So you are on the track now, okay? So what happens is this, the antigenic response, I want to get in a bit, okay? And why do I want to get in a bit? It? Because let's say I just received a kidney, right? So I want the kidney to stay there and I don't want the macrophages and leukocytes of my body to attack on this uh, foreign uh, organ which I want right okay then it's inhibition of vascular permeability by reduction of histamine release and action of uh, chitins again uh, histamine is produced in response to allergic reactions and we want it to get reduced right okay then we have inhibition of archaeodonic acid and prostaglandins production by inhibition of phospholipase A2, which is done with the, by the action of, um, by the help of uh, an axin 1, A1, okay, and the cyclogenesis, right? So this is an enzyme, all right? So we don't want archidionic acid and prostaglandins, right? Because these are the people that produce inflammation, okay? So when we take glucocorticoids, they say, okay, curry, uh, arachnoid acid and prostaglandin, stop doing your action, okay? All right. So then is inhibition of cytokine production. Again, all of these are associated with production of inflammation. And when we are taking glucocorticoid, our inflammation is being stopped, right? All right. Then we have immunological effect like I just talked about. So, glucocorticoids decrease circulating uh, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. So, it increases circulating neutrophils. Uh, long term therapy results in uh, involution and atrophy of all um, lymphoid tissues. So, other effects it inhibits. Uh, inhibition of plasma ACTH and possible adrenal atrophy. Like I just said, when I'll take synthetic uh, 
when I'll take synthetic glucocorticoid, so why would my body produce ACTH, right? So when no more ACTH would be produced, so the adrenal uh, gland would be affected, right? So inhibition of fibroblast growth and collagen synthesis, stimulation of acid and pepsin secretion in the stomach, altered CNS responses, influencing mood and sleep patterns, which we have already talked. So enhanced neuromuscular transmission, induction of surfactant production in the fetal lung. Okay, surfactant uh, is, uh, you know, the mucus which is produced in the lung and that uh, glucocorticoid enhance that. Before I go to the therapeutic uses, I want you all to join back. All right, I'm putting the meeting to an end.